<laughs> I, I think the Lakers will make a deal, maybe more than one deal. It may not be for Kyrie Irving. It may not be for an all-NBA player, an all-star. I don't think the Lakers are done. I think they're trying to find deals to improve without gassing all of their assets. It's getting worse and worse for the Los Angeles Lakers. This is coming from a Los Angeles Laker fan, mind you, and I'm just being objective. A few weeks ago, there was some hope for the Lakers in the form of a Kyrie Irving, Russell Westbrook trade. That seems to be way behind us. Now you're having LeBron James in Russell Westbrook completely ignoring each other and sitting on opposite sides of the court. Russell Westbrook pushing away the people that are the closest to him and the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James once again being at odds over how to improve the Lakers roster. And the worst part is if you don't appease King James, then well, he won't re-sign with the Los Angeles Lakers. And this could be the final year you see LeBron James in a Laker uniform. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. If you think I talk way too much in these YouTube videos, well, good news for you. I upload one minute shorts onto my Instagram page at the flight mic and onto my TikTok, which is the same handle at the flight mic. Go follow us on both. And now that we get all of that out of the way, cue the intro. Check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Man, it sucks to be a Laker fan recently. And here's why. A few weeks ago, the Los Angeles Lakers were relatively close to trading for Kyrie Irving. And I'm gonna bring you guys a brief update on the Kyrie Irving trade front here because I feel like that deserves its own video based upon everything that's going on. I wanted this to be a little bit more focused on the Los Angeles Lakers. So here's where we currently stand. And this is coming from an Instagram page that isn't citing its source that I personally believe because it's been consistent with with the reports that we've been hearing in the past. So in regards to the Los Angeles Lakers attempt to trade for Kyrie Irving, the last time I brought you guys a legitimate source was from none other than Chris B. Haynes. And if you remember, Chris B. Haynes during the weekend of the 4th of July said that the Los Angeles Lakers wanted Seth Curry to be part of the trade. The Brooklyn Nets wanted to include Joe Harris in a Kyrie Irving trade because he's owed $38.6 million over the next two years. The Lakers don't want Joe Harris and want Seth Curry instead. And that is why why the talks have come to a standstill. We've also heard rumblings about the Nets wanting two first round picks, the Lakers only wanting to include one, and well, LeBron James being annoyed because LeBron James doesn't give an F about the Lakers 2027 and 2029 first round picks. Why would he? So here's what the Instagram page said. This is how trade talks have progressed. The Lakers offered Russell Westbrook in a first round pick for Kyrie Irving. The Nets countered by saying Kyrie Irving and Joe Harris for Russell Westbrook in two first round picks. The Lakers countered that saying Russell Westbrook, Talon Horton Tucker, and a first round pick for Kyrie Irving and Seth Curry. The Nets countered by saying Kyrie for Westbrook and two first round picks. And the Lakers countered that saying Westbrook, a first round pick and a second round pick for Irving. The Lakers are trying to avoid falling for the same exact trap that the Brooklyn Nets fell for last year. They don't want to be a team that's going to be completely devoid of first round picks once LeBron James moves on and they need to rebuild around Anthony Davis, which two years ago sounded like a great idea but now it's a little bit of an uncomfortable thought if you ask Laker fans. On top of this, it doesn't seem like the Brooklyn Nets are in any hurry to trade Kyrie Irving. As a matter of fact, the Los Angeles Lakers and Brooklyn Nets talks that involved Russell Westbrook for Kyrie Irving haven't progressed recently. This is coming to us from July 16th via Dave McMenamin. The Lakers and Nets have discussed trades that would swap Russell Westbrook for Kyrie Irving in recent weeks. Those talks have not progressed any closer to an agreement, however. Reporting has been Brooklyn wants the Lakers to add an additional additional assets in an Irving for Westbrook trade. Thus far, the Lakers have been unwilling to add in draft picks or younger players in a deal for Irving. This has reportedly pissed off LeBron James because what value does he have for a 2029 first round pick? And here's the thing, this is just my own speculation and you could either believe it or not, but I personally think that it's a situation where LeBron James is saying, if you don't get me Kyrie Irving, then forget about me signing with the Lakers once my contract expires. He's been kind of hinting 
hinting at potentially leaving all season long. I don't know if you guys remember during the All-Star weekend this past year. I mean, he was going up there and praising Sam Presti. He was praising the Cleveland Cavaliers rebuild. He was doing all kinds of stuff that was raising a few eyebrows while the Lakers weren't performing the best. And we haven't forgotten that. At least I haven't forgotten that. And that's nothing against LeBron James because at the same time, you have to understand that he's in a situation where every year could potentially be the last year of him being great. I mean, he's outdueled father time to an unprecedented level. We've never seen a basketball player with the longevity of LeBron James, maybe Robert Parrish or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but it wasn't at this level. So in that instance, it makes a lot of sense why every single year counts for LeBron James. But it seems like once again, and we covered this in the last video, the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James aren't agreeing in how to improve the team this season. If you remember last off season, the Los Angeles Lakers wanted to acquire Buddy Heald and DeMar DeRozan to support LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And if they would have done that, they would have been able to keep some of their role players. Instead, Anthony Davis and LeBron James pushed the Los Angeles Lakers to try to gut out their roster and trade for Russell Westbrook because he's a former MVP and a big three of them would probably work out. And hey, you don't need any depth. Just go ahead and sign a bunch of players that are considered to be damaged goods or some future Hall of Famers whose best years are behind them. And ultimately, man, the rumor mill has been going crazy as a result of this. I mean, yeah, Jeannie Buss tweeting how she missed Kobe Bryant and how he would understand and explain everything that I'm not allowed to and how he was the greatest Laker ever and he understood team over self, meaning your rewards would come if you value team goals over your own and then everything would fall into place. All can reply. This is where it gets interesting. We don't know what this tweet's about. It could be about LeBron James wanting Kyrie Irving, but the Lakers saying, no, we don't want to trade for Kyrie Irving because there's too much volatility there. We'd rather get you players like Eric Gordon and Buddy Heald instead of Kyrie Irving. Or it could be about Russell Westbrook and we'll get to how in just a sec. Currently, here's where we stand. According to Mark Stein earlier this month, LeBron James wants to see Kyrie Irving in Lakerland more than anyone. What other team furthermore has a LeBron sized personality with the experience to cope with all the chaos that comes with adding Kyrie? James, remember, has often thrived in chaos. So pretty much what Mark Stein is saying is that LeBron James could potentially mitigate the volatility that comes with Kyrie Irving. But the Los Angeles Lakers, and this is according to Stein via Tim Daniels of Bleacher Report, the Lakers are interested in acquiring a shooter like Buddy Heald of the Indiana Pacers or the Houston Rockets' Eric Gordon, which at this point, I think is the intelligent way to go. I mean, we remember when the Los Angeles Lakers traded for Anthony Davis in the summer of 2019. There were talks about them potentially being able to sign Kawhi Leonard as well. Kawhi Leonard took his sweet time while he was pulling some strings behind the scenes and pretty much telling the Clippers go and trade for Paul George and give up five first round picks to do so. Otherwise, I'm not going to sign with you guys. But as a result of that, the Lakers missed out on some great opportunities to bring in some role players. And in this instance, their goal should be to try to avoid this. What about Russell Westbrook, Mike? You've been talking about Russell Westbrook all video long and we haven't had an update on him yet. This is where things get really ugly, guys. So buckle down. There is a crazy article by Joe Von Buha of The Athletic. Shout out to him. It's actually a masterpiece. It's called In the Russell Westbrook Lakers Saga, The Worst Maybe Yet to Come. And it talks about how Russell Westbrook is essentially pushing away some of his day ones as a result of his current situation. It's just the latest in an example of Russell Westbrook refusing to adapt and hold himself accountable for his own shortcoming. And I wanted to preface this by saying, man, I'm no Russell Westbrook hater. I absolutely love the man. He's from California. I want him to succeed. I love his story. I love the revenge tour he went on in 2017. I want this man to win a championship, trust me. But at the same time, I feel like he's really shooting himself in the foot here. And this article explains why. So it starts by saying that the dynamic between the Los Angeles Lakers and Russell Westbrook is becoming more untenable with each passing week as the two sides seemingly head for an inevitable divorce. The most recent development was Westbrook splitting with his longtime agent, Bad Future, who had represented him since he entered the NBA in 2008. Over that period, they were considered one of the stronger player-agent relationships in the league. Bear in mind, this is the agent that got Russell Westbrook his super max contract extension when he was with the OKC Thunder. Now, granted, this was during a different time with Russell Westbrook. The OKC Thunder really felt a connection to him because he stayed despite Kevin Durant leaving. They were going to try to rebuild around him. And ultimately that didn't work out. They got an offer that they couldn't refuse for Paul George from the aforementioned Los Angeles Clippers trading for Paul George in the
the summer of 2019. And as a result, they also traded Russell Westbrook to a spot that he wanted to go to, Houston Rockets. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. When you fire your day one agent, who is responsible for you making millions and millions of dollars, and then the agent goes ahead of it and spills some tea in regards to what's going on with you as a player, that's when you start to realize that behind the scenes, things are absolutely chaotic for Russell Westbrook. So here's what his agent had to say. He cited irreconcilable differences and indicated that Russell Westbrook would like to move on from Los Angeles despite the lack of a trade market for him. In a statement to ESPN last week, these three paragraphs were especially revealing. So just to preface this, Russell Westbrook is telling his agent, I want to be traded. And his agent is telling him, you probably should do your best to stay in LA. So take a look at this, man. Now with the possibility of a fourth trade in four years, the marketplace is telling the Lakers that they must add additional value with Russell Westbrook in any trade scenario. And even then, such a trade may require Russell to immediately move on from the new team via a buyout. Could you just imagine your own agent saying this to you? I mean, for those of you guys that need a recap, here's what happened the first time Russell Westbrook got traded from the OKC Thunder. The Thunder traded Russell Westbrook to the Houston Rockets and received Chris Paul, a first round pick in 2024 and 2026, and the right to swap first rounders in 2021 and 2025. Here are all the pick protections that were placed on it, but this was the first time Russ got traded. Now, you also have to understand that after a while, there were rumors of Russell Westbrook and James Harden not necessarily working out together. I mean, Russell Westbrook had an issue with how dedicated James Harden truly was to his craft. There was this whole article about it, how Russell Westbrook was showing up to film sessions and James Harden would pull up like 30 minutes later. This was during the pandemic, if you guys remember. And then ultimately, Russell Westbrook would demand a trade from the Houston Rockets. And this time, the Houston Rockets were able to trade Russell Westbrook to the Washington Wizards for John Wall and a first round pick. This is a post Achilles tear John Wall. And the pick was in 2023 and it was lottery protected in 2024, top 12 in 2025 and top 10 in 2026. So at this point, Russell Westbrook became a little bit more difficult to trade because at this point, a post Achilles tear John Wall seemingly had a little bit more value than Russell Westbrook. At the same time, I think the Houston Rockets felt some urgency to trade Russell Westbrook because apparently James Harden told him that he would try to run it with John Wall, but ultimately that didn't work out. And James Harden got traded shortly after to the Brooklyn Nets, which brings us to the final Russell Westbrook trade. The final Russell Westbrook trade involved the Washington Wizards trading Westbrook and a 2024 second round pick and a 2028 second round pick for Kyle Kuzma, Contavious Caldwell Pope, Montrez Harrell, and a first round pick tonight. So what the agent is trying to say is in the past, trading for Russell Westbrook involved assets. Now you're going to have to package assets in order to get rid of Russell Westbrook. Once you do that, the team that traded for Westbrook is probably going to buy out his Supermax contract. And as a result of this philosophy with Westbrook, Westbrook fired his agent for saying that to him. Now, this isn't even the end because it's not like the agent went up to Westbrook and just straight up gave him the finger. He then continued to say that my belief is that this type of transaction only serves to diminish Russell Westbrook's trade value and his best option is to stay with the Lakers, embrace the starting role and support that Darvin Ham publicly offered. Russell is a first ballot Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame player and will prove that again before he is retired. Unfortunately, irreconcilable differences exist as to his best pathway forward and we are no longer working together. I wish Russell and his family the very best. I don't think I've ever seen an agent do this before. It's unprecedented without a doubt. And we're not going to hear Russell Westbrook's side of the story because it's not like he's really cool with the media to begin with. But with all due respect, his agent's right. If the Lakers want to trade Russell Westbrook for Kyrie Irving, they need to give up two first round picks at minimum to get rid of him. And his agent also said that if Russell Westbrook is traded, he'd potentially be bought out and have to find a new team. And the market will be tough because Russell Westbrook isn't 29 years old anymore. He's 34 years old who could only thrive in specific circumstances. Does this sound like another player that, I don't know, was very dominant during the first 10 or so years of his career and then slowly after began to fizzle out as he refused to accept a new role to adapt into the NBA. You guys remember Allen Iverson? Allen Iverson's one of the greatest players in NBA history, the best pound for pound player in NBA history. But unfortunately, during the latter parts of his career, when he could have without a doubt prolonged his career even more, he refused to come off of the bench. He refused to accept lesser roles 
goals, and as a result, his career ended way sooner than it could have. In my opinion, I think Iverson could have played until 2013 or 2014. His career ended in 2010 because he wanted to start. That's not even it, man. The agent also hinted at Russell Westbrook's lack of self-awareness regarding his situation. Westbrook hasn't accepted that his prime is behind him and the limitations in his game make it difficult for him to be part of a team that has higher aspirations than losing in the first round of the playoffs. Dude, this is coming from his agent of 14 years. Buha says that the subtext to his agent's language is that Westbrook doesn't want to adhere to new coach Darvin Ham's vision for him. Westbrook becoming a defense first point guard who plays more off the ball than he did last season and any season of his career. This of course isn't surprising as the Lakers used similar framing with Westbrook's projected role last season and it never came to fruition because Westbrook has no interest in role player tasks. And ladies and gentlemen, if you waited up until this point, this is where we tie everything together. So get this, this brings us to Summer League. And I want you to really pay attention because really shortly after this Buha article came out, my man, one of my favorite insiders in the game, Chris B. Haynes, dropped this article on Yahoo Sports saying sources, LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, and Anthony Davis commit to making Lakers big three work. Man, Laker fans must feel very optimistic as a result of this headline. If you click on the article and read it, it says the Los Angeles Lakers big three of LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook huddled up on a phone conversation the first weekend of NBA Summer League in Las Vegas with each expressing their commitment to one another and vowing to make it work, league sources told Yahoo Sports. So I want you to pay attention to the language of this. They had this conversation the first weekend of NBA Summer League. So Crispy Haynes probably dropped this article at the request of someone from the Los Angeles Lakers brass, probably as a leverage play as a result of this incredible article that Buha wrote. And the reason why I'm so confident about this is because what actually happened at Summer League when LeBron James and Russell Westbrook were in the same building with each other, LeBron James, who historically would pull up to Summer League with his star players and his role players like Kyle Kuzma and Anthony Davis all hanging out together at the Summer League. You remember that summer? Well, in this instance, LeBron James and Russell Westbrook sat at opposite sides of the court with each other. They didn't even acknowledge each other's existence. These are two former MVPs that play on the same team together. And there's been additional slights towards Russell Westbrook. I mean, this is just us maybe potentially overanalyzing because obviously a player isn't going to come out and just completely throw his teammate under the bus. But in his his recent episode of The Shop, LeBron James mentioned how much it bothers him when he doesn't feel his teammates want to win as badly as he does. I'm obsessed with it, with win or bust. And what makes me have sleepless nights is when you don't have everyone that feels the same way on your club. If you remember, man, there have been multiple interviews with Russell Westbrook this past year, and this is what infuriated Laker fans, where they asked him about his shortcomings, and Russell Westbrook would give responses like this. What did I imagine? Russ. Yeah, you said you envisioned this to be a certain way. I want to know what you... Did you envision it to look like this? I had, no, I had no expectations. And you remember the Genie Bus tweet? I know that I correlated it to LeBron James in my last video. This tweet can mean a bunch of things, but it could also mean that Russell Westbrook has a player first mentality that is sabotaging the Los Angeles Lakers. At this point in Russell Westbrook's career, he's broken up with his agent. He's been placed in a situation where he could win a championship, but he's not willing to do what it takes to win a championship. Despite him still making super max contract money, by the way. I mean, if you really wanted to win a championship, and this isn't necessarily something I expect from any player, because I understand when you're getting paid stupid amounts of money, it's kind of hard to turn it down. But you just saw James Harden take a gigantic pay cut. He's making 36 million this year, and he literally told Daryl Morey to pay him the rest after he gets good role players to help him win a championship. But in Russell Westbrook's case, he just opted in. And it's not necessarily a horrible thing, because I also understand, but when you look at 
the career earnings of James Harden. And I understand it's unfair to compare these two players because Harden played in Houston where there's no state income tax for a majority of his career. But James Harden has made $268 million throughout his career up until this point. Russell Westbrook has made $288 million in his career up until this point. And again, I understand if you want the money, I get it. But you could have easily just shown the Lakers how much you want to win a championship by opting out of your contract and signing for a little less so they could sign some role players. But instead, it seems like you're pointing the blame finger at the Los Angeles Lakers for your inability to succeed. And when you potentially are headed towards your fourth trade in four seasons at a specific point, you can't blame your circumstances anymore. All you can blame is yourself.